Hey guys, welcome back to Adventure Cruiser. Now, my last video was taking apart an APX 6000, and as I was putting it away, I thought, I have a couple of these Baofeng style radios. One is a proper Baofeng, one is a TID radio, TID radio. And I've often wondered if manufacturers are using the same internals and putting different skins on them. Now, these have slightly different configurations. There are Baofengs with larger screens, um, the TID radio does have the larger screen. And just to be perfectly honest with you, <clears throat> the Baofeng is one I bought, uh, UV5R3. This is one I've used in water tests and a few things like that. The TID radio was sent to me by them and um, they wanted me to write a nice review on it, but that's not my style. And we've had some conversations, so I basically said, I'm going to put out a video, but it's gonna be my style of video, and I'm expecting nothing in return, and I will likely send this back to them. Um, so yes, it was a free radio. No, I'm not getting anything else from them. Um, I probably will never get anything from any other radio manufacturer again after they watch what I do to this guy. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I wanna do is just compare how close different components are in these radios to see if they are potentially made in the same factory or of the same parts. So the antennas uh, are clearly different. The TID radio has uh, its FX-UV and it says 144 slash 435 megahertz. So I think that's a European ham band. It's not the US ham band. Um, the Baofeng says fm dash or slash 136-174 slash 400 to 512 megahertz. So this one is covering all traditional VHF and um, all traditional UHF too, except for the 380 megahertz band. So this is a very wide band antenna. I think this one's slightly more narrower. I do kind of like this flexible antenna. This is a very traditional antenna. Nothing wrong with either one of those. The power knobs are clearly different. Let's see if we can get them off. Obviously these have a lot of cosmetic changes to them. And you know, I would expect nothing less, but what I'm mostly interested in is, is there anything inside that's the same? Now, I should probably turn them on first. Frequency mode, welcome. Okay, same voice, okay? I know it's a synthesized voice, but it's the same voice. Like, how, where are they getting this? Why do they have the same font everywhere inside on these radios? Welcome. Uh, not this one, but other um, Chinese radios that I have purchased too. Sorry, should have been a little clearer there. Um, there we go. Okay, the batteries are 7.4 volts in each case, um, 18.5 watt hours, 1800 milliamp hours, 2500 milliamp hours. So the TID radio is better in capacity than the Baofeng uh, UV5R version 3. I know it's an older version now. But let's do some surgery. I am very hard on Chinese radios. I really am. I, I know that in many ways they are saving the market. They are introducing people that don't have a lot of money or want to spend a lot of money on radios to the radio hobby. And I appreciate that. I love that. I like that more people are coming into this environment. I remember going to Ham Radio Outlet about 10 years ago and them saying that ham radio was dying. And I think that over the past four years, maybe five, I've seen the exact opposite. I think that radio usage has increased, whether it's from you know guys LARPing on the shooting range or having adventures or this overlanding, um, this overlanding kick that everybody's been on that now seems to be dying off. Um, whatever the case, I really like that more people are getting into the radio hobby. Okay, so I think 
that these have the exact same design, but they are same, same. My icrometer says they are the exact same castle nut. That doesn't say anything. That's a very common part, but the same wrench fit on both. This is a castle nut wrench. I think I got this one off of eBay. Um, I thought it would work with Motorola's. It did not. And this is the first time I've used it on a radio where everything fits perfectly and that I don't have to file some of these teeth to get it to fit. So this is the Motorola wrench. Very heavy, solid. Um, this is a very expensive part to make. All of these bosses are machined um, and these are circular. This is very cheap to make. It's made on a lathe and they probably did a five axis and they just cut, 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 rotate, cut. Um, there's not a whole lot of finish work that goes into this. This, you can tell they've, they've machine chamfered all the edges. It's worth the money, but it doesn't work on these Chinese radios. There's always a downside. Okay, so, so far, the two nuts that hold everything together are the same. The screws are different, but that doesn't really say a whole lot. I'm limited in what tools I keep here at the office. Um, I am a bit of a tool junkie, but that's at my house. I think. take this guy off too. So for now, I mean, you can, you can clearly see that there are very stark differences cosmetically between these two radios. Um, and I'm mostly concerned about what's really inside the radio. I don't care about the cosmetics. Those are a lot easier to replace. Um, I know guys who have been in the uh, plastic injection molding business and China is a great market. If you have something that you want produced in high volume um, with injection molding, great, send it there. Um, the United States is far more expensive to make plastic pieces, though they, in many cases, are better quality. So who wants to see me break a radio? Never taken this apart, clearly, but I know it has to come apart. What I'm trying to do is as I've lifted the bottom of the radio up a little bit, I'm feeling resistance. There's something in here that's catching. So again, I'm using my non-metallic spudger Klein screwdriver. <laughs> okay, it's neither of those, except that it is a Klein. Okay, now, when you watched the video, me taking the Motorola apart, what you saw were ribbon cable connectors that connected every feature together. This is a way of saving money when they don't have a ribbon cable, but they solder things in. This is not designed to have replaceable components, which is kind of the way the world's going, but it's it's sad to see that. I like things that are repairable. Um, there is a little bit of oxidation in here from when I did the freeze thaw test on this radio and when I submerged it. Um, interesting. Interesting, interesting. So it does say on this one, 5R version 30C. This one I don't think will say version 5R 30C. But just because it doesn't say it doesn't mean they don't have some sort of similarities inside. Again, the scientific process is you come up with a thesis, your hypothesis, and then you test it. And that's what we're doing here is we're testing this hypothesis. Again, I don't really care about preserving these. This is for the sake of science. Interesting, check this out. On the TID radio, it has a speaker with pads on it. And on the circuit board, the PCB, you have springs that attach there. In my opinion, this is better built 
I feel like there's more engineering that goes into this TID radio than the Baofeng. Greater quality too. For those who don't know my past, um, I've done a lot of things and um, I've been an engineer and part of my role as an engineer was a quality engineer for a aerospace and biomedical manufacturer. So when I'm looking at things like this, it's not just me being an idiot going, oh, that looks nice. It's me looking at it with a critical eye with experience and saying, hmm, yeah, I think that this is better because of X, Y, and Z. Not that I'm anybody or anything special, mind you. Because I'm not. But I'm curious. I think this is probably about as far down as we can get this radio without really breaking anything because I love magnetic screwdrivers. Because there's a what appears to be a Phillips head screw under the display. And I don't see a way of removing the display without some sort of destruction. I don't believe that the display comes out of this white support collar. or that the white support collar comes out of. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like that crunchy sound. That is the sound of oopsie. Okay. This liquid crystal is coming out, which means it's probably let the pixies out now and it's fried. Okay. Oh boy. There's a lot of care that goes into this radio. I'm, I'm honestly very impressed. For instance, this tape here, this is the same style of tape that's used in automotive wiring harnesses from um, more elite manufacturers such as Mercedes-Benz. And they not only put the ribbon into a removable connector, but they ensured its connectivity with this tape. That's, that's an extra step, and I, and I know it might not seem like much, but that's an extra step that costs money. And in many cases, manufacturers are trying to avoid spending money on stuff like this. But that is a removable connection. I'm, I don't want to like it, guys. I really don't. But I'm... I'm a lot more impressed with how this one is put together than what I saw in the Balfang so far. But again, if you don't like either and you don't have a horse in the race in either way, what's the problem, right? Okay, so this is weird though, that the housing for the display element, this, uh, you have to remove the display before the housing is removed. And that, that I'm struggling with. But they did put a layer of captain tape here to protect these circuits from impact from the back of this display housing. So again, another level of, hey, we actually care about this thing. All right, let's keep going. We've come this far. There are a few major feature differences between these radios, and I don't really believe that it's fair to compare the two radios based off of specific features, because I know that Baofeng has updated since the version three, which I have, and they have added things such as USB-C charging. And um, my specific version does not have USB-C charging, but 
this TID radio does. It has charging and programming here, and then the battery itself has USB-C here um, with a power indicator on how full the, the battery is, um, which makes sense because just to jump back a little bit, the Balfang has multiple pins for the battery, which I'm guessing include a temperature resistance sensor. No, they don't. Hmm, that's just two pogo pins attaching to a positive and a negative here on the battery. Um, and the temperature pin is here for charging. So this radio is not provisioned for charging through any sort of connection except the base charger. That'll keep the lithium battery from exploding, much like all of our lithium battery storage centers here in Southern California have been doing recently. That's an absolute travesty. Nobody saw that coming. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah, you put that many lithium batteries together, you are uh, kind of setting yourself up for disaster, in my opinion. But again, what does my opinion care? You guys are here to watch radios getting taken apart. And I don't blame you. Okay. Uh, have we met another impasse? Let's see if this removes non-destructively. I don't feel like it does. I feel like that solder connection goes straight to the center pin of this coax. And that's exactly the case. So what I'm seeing through here is a uh, moisture tight orange connector, which you can see from the outside. Um, your speaker mic connection, which is either likely a old style Kenwood or old style ICOM. Um, it has a vibration dampening pad in here. Oftentimes you'll see these white compressible pads. Um, that's again, another really nice, that's a really nice thing that they added. I, I, I kind of feel like this company actually cares about their radio. Um, and I, I didn't expect that. I kind of expected it to be a commodity thing where, you know, oh, we're just going to pump out 10,000 of these things and or a million of these things. And, you know, the Harbor Freight experience of, sure, one out of 100 is totally rotten from the factory. But we make it up in volume. We can exchange them for nothing. So I think that's as far as we can go on that radio. So let's go back to the Balfang. The microphone ports appear to be the same. And that's not really supposed to come off. I'm hoping there was a part number under there. The microphone element on this one, on the TID radio, is larger by 10 to 20 thousandths of an inch than the Balfang. Again, the Balfang may have been updated since. Um, TDH3, so this is a TID radio. Uh, it says 2023 11 24. I'm guessing that's uh, November 24th of 2023 that this was revised. Um, that's intriguing. Okay, so let's jump back into this guy. And let's see how far we can take it down. doesn't really want to move. Okay, so the LCD screen in here with the conductive ribbons um, does remove. This is a diffused LED backing. It's like a light pipe and when you when you put light into the back of it, it spreads it evenly across the device. But I'm, I'm not seeing any LEDs right off the bat, but there have to be some, oh, here it is. See this LED here on the side? There are, let's see if I can show that. There are two small chipset LEDs at the edge there. And um, that is a much cheaper way of doing it than having a backlit LCD screen or maybe even LED, I'm not real sure. 
that's more of a traditional phone display. This is more of a LCD that you'd get in a, you know, an old Casio watch. These things are a little crusty because it's been submerged before, but that's all right. I was pretty impressed with how this this radio held up to the water submersion test. Um, it did ultimately fail initially. And I was like, all right, cool. I've got a decisive winner, the Rocky Taki one. And um, then this one came back to life. So who knows? Okay, take that off. I think we might have the same situation. See how solid this solder connection is? I'm guessing that this antenna connection comes in and straight into the board and they soldered it post assembly. So we may not be able to get this apart any more than it already is. Hmm. I know this is an earlier version of the radio, but I'm, I'm nowhere near as impressed with it as I am with the TID radio. Um, I, I'm hoping and expecting that they have probably updated this, but what I really expected was to have basically no differences between these and that other companies like TID Radio were simply buying components from Baofeng, putting their own name on it, you know, brand relabeling. Um, it's not uncommon in this radio industry. Um, but that's what I was expecting and that's not what I'm finding. So my hypothesis is not coming true. I do believe that there is a lot of independent engineering that's gone into this, this radio. I think that um, while I'm still not a big fan of, of Chinese radios or just cheap junkie radios in general, because I don't like the audio quality of them, among other things, um, spurious transmissions, nodes, all that good stuff. Um, Hands down, I'd have to say that this is a better quality radio than the Baofeng, at least of this era. Now, if I had been thinking clearly, I probably would have done some um, oscilloscope testing on these two before I took them apart. And I really don't have the time nor the interest to put them back together today. <laughs> yeah, forethought. Yeah, that's the thing you should do before afterthought. Hmm. Anyways, I hope this is informative. It's, it's a curiosity for me more than anything. But I, I really am more impressed with the TID radio now that I've taken it apart than I expect it to be. And I think that between the two of them, I'm probably going to put this guy back together and not the Baofeng, at least not yet. I, yay, 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 I don't know. They sent it to me with no strings attached. I mean, they did ask me to make a video about it just to be perfectly clear. And I told them I wasn't gonna follow their formula. And they made some great offers that I kind of said, meh, that's not my thing. I don't, I don't take radios and review them for money. Um, I don't want to, I don't want this hobby to turn into a business. Um, enjoy radios and I want to share what I've learned with you guys. But if I again were to buy an inexpensive radio, it probably would clearly be a TID radio over a Baofeng. I would still buy a Rocky Taki before either of them. Um, I do really like the Rocky Taki still. I've taken them apart. I think they're just clean. The engineering is really well done, uh, well thought out, crisp, clean, transmissions, good audio, good microphone, um, a superior radio in my opinion. But there are a lot of guys that want to explore the hobby and sport of playing with radios. And I can't say that this is not a potentially good radio for that. Um, I have not loaded the programming software into it yet or into my computer because again, I didn't think that I would be liking it at all, but I kind of am. That's 
forgive me. I have sinned. I'm, I'm enjoying a Chinese, or I don't know where this one's made. I'm assuming it's Chinese. I'm enjoying a little cheapo radio. I can appreciate it. Mm, that's, that's not a good sign, guys. That's not a good sign. I think I need to go repent. Either that or buy another BK radio. Either one of those options sounds really good to me. Again, I am not using the proper tools for this, nor do I give a darn. So for those of you who are judging me for that, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I am here to enjoy this. Put the screen. Make sure that I've done all of the other components before I put this back in. I guarantee you this is not the type of video that they envisioned when they sent me this radio. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm going to do a follow-up once I hear back from them on this because it's it's cringy for them but uh, to have the radio totally taken apart. But I do like it better than the Baofeng. No questions asked. It's better than the Baofeng, at least from build quality. And I haven't put it on scope or anything like that. I haven't tested the the transmissions. Um, heck, I haven't even keyed up on any of my usual frequencies. Um, but I probably will. And uh, I still won't add a link to this because I don't feel like it's it's fair for me to try and sell this to anybody. Um, that's not what I do not trying to get people to send me stuff that you know they're going to pay me for. If you want to send me something and have me take it apart and play with it, I love that idea. Love it. Look at that. It works. Okay. Well, guess what? I'm going to play with this a little bit more. I'm probably going to now finally program it and I'm going to What? I was looking forward to peeling that display cover off and all it was is a blue tab. Lame. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to playing with this a little bit more now. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Let me know if you guys want to see me actually try and run this through some actual tests. Well, uh, do I really have to put this thing back together? Guys, it's going to be a longer video. For those of you who have watched this far, thank you so much. Don't worry about continuing to watch. It's not why I'm here, but I'm kind of curious to see if I can put it back together just because it's it's been one of those days and I, I need a win. Not like this is actually going to be a win for me necessarily, but um, life, right? As a kid, I always enjoyed taking things apart. Uh, loved it. My parents really blessed me by uh, saving things for me to take apart. Uh, the challenge is I was never any good at putting them back together. And then as life moved on for me and that became more of my job was figuring out how to build things, um, I figured out that I probably ought to learn how to put things back together as well as take them apart. So, lame, I know. Let's see. Were there any screws in that corner? I don't think there were any screws in those two corners. Those are too close to the edge and they are not bolstered by copper to protect a PC board. Again, these are perfectly torqued to the matte standard, which I steal from the German standard of gut and tight. <laughs> and you know what they say about the best Loctite? Oh yeah, best Loctite is cross-threading. I don't care. Okay, so now we're gonna put our light pipe back in. And then this is the part that always fails on me is trying to get an LCD ribbon to line up the way it's supposed to, but we're just gonna try it. Okay, that might work. 
couple more of these guys together. Is there anything specifically you guys want to see me take apart or any radios you're more curious about that? Oh, <laughs> I love stripped threads. But we're going to leave it. Don't tell anybody. Is there anything specifically you guys want me to work on more? Um, I can't guarantee that I'll do it because I have my own projects, my own life. I'm kind of a busy guy sometimes. But I do like the idea of taking things apart. That looks like that goes. We'll go that way. It looks prettier. Okay, so see when they, and they have this long, that long two conductor wire. Man, that's cringy. Where did those go? Okay, this could be interesting. Ah, missed a step. Looks like this has to go in underneath, but how? I should have paid more attention when I took this silly thing apart. But I really did not anticipate putting it back together. It just didn't. It didn't cross my mind. Okay, that fits there. And I guess that has to go on that way. Just like factory. <laughs> oh wait, not really. That looks awful. I mean, not that it looked great to begin with, but it looks pretty awful. That can't be how it went. Give it one more shot and then just remove that piece altogether. That's always a frightening sound. Okay, this has to go up against that board. And we're gonna put that that direction this time. And it's going to look janky, and I'm okay with that. But I do want to see if it'll turn back on once we get everything back in. This is a complaint of mine. Okay, do you guys see how many different size screws there are that are just barely close enough to fit in all of these holes, but they're all slightly different? Um, the Motorola that I took apart was very clearly different in every screw, and that made it really easy to make sure that you had... Um, everything aligned as it should be. This one, on the other hand, we do not have that luxury. So it's gonna be a little bit more trial and error. Um, I know that there is a right way and a wrong way with these, but we're just gonna have to figure out which screws seem to fit the best. Yeah, sure, why not?
One of the elements I critique radios on, or any item really, is whether or not they come apart and go back together easily or not. You know, for instance, a hand-built car like a Rolls-Royce, I'm sure, is a thing of beauty. But there is no cross-compatibility between some hand-fitted parts. And I'm using Rolls-Royce just as an arbitrary example. Um, and it was Henry Ford that is credited with coming out with the, um, the assembly line and having repeatable parts. And part of that took engineering and metrology to make sure that son of a motherless... I forgot to put that guy in. Um, yeah, so Henry Ford's credited with creating the assembly line. And part of what the assembly line required was parts that were not always hand fit. Now, some of them I'm sure still were, but that evolved into the concept of parts being universal, fitting anywhere and everywhere that they were, were needed in the same type of object. Um, that was part of the industrial revolution and it worked really well. And I find that there are a lot of companies that still don't follow that philosophy. In engineering, we would call it the pokey yoke or the mistake proof. And what that would mean is that if you have four holes lining something up that is only allowed to be configured one way, let's say it's like this, that one of the holes would be offset. And so you can only orient it one way, or one of them would be larger, or there'd be a corner cut off, something like that, that would allow it to only fit in one configuration. That's the, uh, the term pokey yoke. And I don't see a lot of that in poorly engineered items, including things that I build by hand, because I don't ever plan on taking them apart, and I plan on being the only one to work on them. But that doesn't mean that they are actually designed well. They may look nice, they may function well, but a proper design means, in my eyes, that it should be disassembled and reassembled easily and repeatably. And I just am not seeing that here. All right. We're going to take that piece off because it's just getting in my way. I'm sure it's important, but I don't want it. You know what's funny is there are zero seals in here, none at all, and yet it's still held up to some of the water abuse I put it through. That's impressive. Okay, I gotta give Baofeng credit for that. Um, anyways, when when things are really challenging to disassemble and reassemble, like for instance, a in my experience Harris GP, sorry XG100. Um, you know, if you're gonna recase an XG100. Man, you better have some spare ribbons. You better have um, a lot of spare parts. Like it's it's intense, and I just I, I don't really have the same respect for Harris that I do for Motorola or even BK. Um, I just things have to be robust in this world. I know we're a society where things are just thrown away, and I, I'm guilty of that too. But it doesn't mean that I. I want things to be designed to that standard, and I don't think anybody does, really. All right. I'm almost done, guys. Once I get this other one turned on, then the video is over, I hope. Those are just for the belt latch, so it doesn't really matter how tight they are as long as those don't fall out. I've done this a number of times with needle nose pliers and um, nothing wrong with that if that's your only option, but man, oh man, having a, a wrench like this, it's so nice. Line up the flat.
And there we go. All right. So despite my best efforts, both radios still turn on and you can hear them. Um, would I personally ever buy these for what I do? Absolutely not. Like not a chance. Welcome. But if I were to suggest a very inexpensive radio for somebody who's getting into the radio hobby oh, or okay. or uh, a friend of mine who's very, very, very cheap though, um, has a very nice Jeep and just doesn't want to spend any money on anything. That's right, I'm talking about you. Uh, you know who you are. Um, yeah, I'd suggest this one over this any day of the week. That's my opinion. Those are my observations. I hope you guys have a great day. Sorry this video is so long. I hope you got something out of it. But yes, there are true differences between these. They appear to not be made with the same components, except for a few, like the Castle Nuts. Um, but that's all I got for you. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Have fun.